Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again from the O-Ray team with an overview of the BK-EXB330EAU-K HDMI extension kit with KVM functionality. This product is jam-packed with features and was engineered to make it incredibly easy for you to share all of your HDMI media content from one location with a second remote location up to 330 feet away over a single CAT6 or CAT7 LAN cable. But the product also provides KVM functionality, which means you can connect the computer up at the primary or secondary location and then connect a wide variety of USB peripherals like a keyboard or a mouse or maybe a hard drive or a camera to the other remote location with which are immediately seen by that computer. The product fully supports 8K ultra high definition media content and is both HDMI 2.1 as well as HDCP 2.3 compliant, which means it's gonna work perfectly fine with all of your modern media gear and your computers. The unit also features the very latest in power over cable technology, which means a single power supply is all you'll need to operate the entire solution because the power required for the other module is sent across that LAN cable. The transmitter features local loopback functionality, which allows you to enjoy the content here that you're sharing with the secondary location. The kit includes a set of infrared blasters that will collect up the remote control signals from that secondary location and pass those back digitally over the same LAN cable to the primary location where they're rebroadcast so you can remotely control the content you're watching. The system also provides an internet extension between the two locations, so you can connect the transmitter up to your local network, and that's shared with the remote location, which you can use. Finally, both of the units can act as either a host or a device, and you can make that decision with the buttons on the front. And once you make that decision, you can inject both audio and video at either location that's sent across that same LAN cable. So for example, at the remote location, I can inject audio here, that's listened to at the primary site, or vice versa, the same for video. Now, as part of this overview, I'd like to start with a quick unboxing just to show you everything that's included with the kit, and then I'll take a closer look at both modules and I'll explain the connections and indicators so you understand how to use them. I'll list the features and functions the product provides, and then I'll come back and do a short demonstration to show you just how simple the system will be to use with your own equipment. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you first open up the box, you'll find a transmitter module and a receiver module. You'll also find a set of brackets you can use to mount these modules up off the ground and out of the way. You'll find a single 24 volt, 2.7 amp DC power supply. You'll simply plug this into the wall, plug it into the end of the power supply. Then the other end of the cable has a barrel connection on it, which you can plug into the transmitter or the receiver module. And again, because of the power over cable technology, the power needed for the other module sent across that LAN connection. You'll find a set of infrared blasters in the kit, and there are two different ones here. There's a receiver here and a transmitter here, and it's important you plug those into the correct module. You'll also find a warranty card that explains everything you need to know about the product, and a full instruction manual that includes connection diagrams, specifications, and other really important details about the product that you really have to read through to get full functionality out of the product. And finally, there's two RS-232 connectors that you can use to transmit RS-232 connection signals across the network as well. Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll take a closer look at both modules, I'll list the features and functions, and then I'll come back and do that demonstration. Inside the kit, you'll find a transmitter module and a receiver module. Both of these feature full metal enclosures, which make them incredibly durable and really the perfect choice for both residential and commercial installations. Let's take a look at the transmitter module. The first thing you'll probably notice are the ventilation slots on the top of the cabinet, and those are designed to let any heat that develops during Operation Escape and keep the electronics inside at a very comfortable temperature. You'll also find more ventilation on either side that help to keep the electronics nice and cool. On the bottom of the unit are four holes that can be used with the included bracketing kit to mount this module up off the ground and out of the way if you choose to do that. You'll also find four rubber feet on the bottom that help to protect the surface you set it down on and keep it from sliding around during operation. On the front of the unit, starting on the left, is a single port labeled USB host. This product provides KVM functionality, which essentially allows you to extend the USB connection from your computer to the remote location. And if you'd like to take advantage of that feature, you can connect your computer to this port. The minute you make that connection, these three USB 2.0 ports become active, so anything you plug in here will be seen by your computer. To the right of that is a switch labeled USB control. The product allows you to have the transmitter or the receiver act as the host or the device, and you can make your selection there, and that's fully explained in the manual as well. To the right of that is a power indicator. The minute you add power to this module, or if you add power to the receiver and connect the LAN cable up, 
This unit will receive power over that LAN cable because of the power over cable technology. But the minute power is applied to this module, it immediately starts an internal power on self-test where it checks the electronics. And once it passes that test, it'll light that LED letting you know the module's ready to use. To the right of that is another indicator labeled link. When you make the LAN connection between the two modules and power them up, that connection is checked. And once it's been verified, the link light will come on letting you know that you've got a solid connection. To the right of that is an input indicator. When you connect the transmitter up to the media device you'd like to share the content from with the remote location, that HDMI cable is checked as well. Once that's been verified, the input indicator will come on. Finally, there's an output indicator. If you use the local loopback functionality of the transmitter and connect it to a local monitor, that HDMI connection is checked and the output indicator comes on. Under normal operation, the power, the link, the input, and possibly the output indicator should all be on. To the right of that is another button labeled eARC, and that's used to turn on the eARC or ARC functionality. This product is completely compatible with both of those standards, so if you're using a media device that uses either the ARC or EARC standard, you can turn it on by tapping that button. On the rear of the units where you'll make all your connections, starting on the left is a DC input port, and that's where the power supply connects. You can simply plug that power supply into a wall outlet. The other end of that cable has a barrel connection on it, which plugs in right there, and you can finger tighten the collar. To the right of that is a LAN port labeled Ethernet. This basically can connect to your local router because this product can actually extend your internet connection to the remote location. So if you'd like to do that, simply connect this up to your local network. To the right of that are two more ports labeled IR in and IR out. And this is where the infrared blasters connect. In the case of the transmitter, you'll want to have the infrared out, which is the actual smaller head unit plug-in right there. You won't be using the infrared in. To the right of that is a connection for RS-232 signals. This product actually transmits and receives RS-232 signals at the remote location. And if you'd like to take advantage of that feature, you can use the connection blocks in the kit to make that easier. To the right of that is another LAN port labeled HDBT out. And that's where one end of the CAT6 or CAT7 cable connects between the transmitter and the receiver. So make sure you use a high quality cable between the two. To the right of that is an HDMI port labeled HDMI in. It also is the eARC port. This connects to whatever media device you'd like to share the content from with your remote location. To the right of that is an HDMI output port. Again, you can connect a local monitor here to either mirror the content that you're sending to the remote location or view content that's being sent from the remote location back to the primary location. And again, that's fully explained in the manual. To the right of that are two audio connections. They're three and a half millimeter left and right audio analog connections. You can either inject audio here to be played at the remote location or inject audio at the remote location to be played here through the output connection. So depending on which of those two modes you're using, you'll make a connection here to a local amplifier. To the right of that is a bank of EDID switches. And these are explained in the manual as well. They essentially allow you to adjust the frame rate and resolution of your input media versus your output media. So you'll want to set those correctly for whatever type of media you're transmitting to the remote location. Finally, another set of switches are labeled config. This unit has several functions, as I've mentioned, and you can set these configuration switches to take advantage of a lot of those features. Now we'll take a look at the receiver. Again, ventilation on the top and both sides. On the bottom, the mounting holes for the bracketing kit, rubber feet that will protect the surface you set it down on. On the front of the unit, again, you'll find another USB host connection. Now, depending on which mode you have set here, you may not need to make that connection. But either way, these are going to become active once you make the connection to the primary side and you've connected it to your computer. Power indicator, link indicator, input and output indicators, all the same function as on the transmitter. And again, you can turn the eARC on right here. On the rear of the unit, very similar connections. Power connection here. You'll only need to use the power supply either at the transmitter side or the receiver side because of that power over cable technology. Whatever power is needed by the other module is sent across that LAN connection. If this is the remote receiver end and you've decided that this is gonna be the device, you can connect up here for an internet connection from the front end. Again, infrared connections right here. In the case of the receiver, you're going to plug the larger unit into the infrared in. That's where the signals are picked up that are sent to the remote location. Next to that is an RS-232 connection. Again, if you're sending RS-232 signals across that LAN port, you can connect up here. This is a port where the other end of that CAT6 or CAT7 LAN cable plugs in directly there. 
If you'd like to send HDMI information back to the transmitter, you can plug a media device in here and view it on that loopback feature on the transmitter side. And then to the right of that is an HDMI output port, and this connects to a local monitor at your remote location where you'd like to enjoy the content. To the right of that are two audio connections. Again, these are bi-directional, so if you're sending audio from the transmitter to the remote location, you'll plug your amplifier in here. If you'd like to send audio from that remote location back to the primary location, you can plug that media in here. Then finally, another set of configuration switches, which you can use to modify the configuration on the remote receiver. And that's pretty much it for the pair of the devices. The O-Ray BK-EXB330EAU-K is compatible with most modern HDMI media sources, including digital projectors, streaming devices, game consoles, computer systems, and media players like Roku. The product's features include full support of 8K ultra-high definition media content, it extends that media content up to 330 feet between the primary and secondary locations. It also provides KVM extension capabilities between those two locations. It is both HDMI 2.1 as well as HDCP 2.3 compliant and provides ARC and EARC audio extraction. It features local loopback functionality and includes an infrared blaster kit for remote control of the content. Now I'll show you just how easy it'll be to use this product with your own equipment. And for the first part of this demonstration, I'd like to illustrate how you can easily share HDMI media content from one location with a second remote location up to 330 feet away over a single LAN cable. Now for this part of the demonstration, I've set up a small media player right here that's currently looping a video on this monitor, and that's the media content that I'd like to share with my other location. Over here, I've set up a second monitor that represents my remote location. It's wherever I'd like to enjoy the content from that primary side. In front of me, I have the transmitter module here and the receiver module here. Now, the first connection I'll make is to the transmitter module, and I'll start by connecting the media device directly up to it by disconnecting the HDMI cable from the monitor and plugging that into the HDMI input port on the transmitter. And now I can connect the receiver up to the second monitor. I have another cable connected to this monitor, and I'll plug that into the HDMI output port on the receiver. And it's really important that you use high quality HDMI cables to get the best possible resolution at your remote location. Now we're ready for the network connection between them, and that has to be a CAT6 or a CAT7 cable. I have a short CAT6 cable I'll use for that connection, and I'll plug it into the receiver and the other end into the transmitter. Now one of the features this product provides is a technology called power over cable, and what that means is a single power supply is all you'll need to operate the entire solution, and you can plug that in at the transmitter or the receiver end because the power required for the other module is sent across that LAN cable, which greatly simplifies your wiring. So I've already plugged in that power supply. The other end of the cable from that has a barrel connection on it with a locking collar, and I can plug it into either module. I'll plug it into the transmitter. And the minute I do that and tighten the collar, the transmitter immediately starts an internal power on self-test where it's checking the electronics. It's also checking the resolution of my media device. It's sending power across that LAN cable to the receiver, which is starting its internal power on self-test, also checking the resolution of the monitor. They're doing a handshake across that LAN cable. And once all that settles down, they're gonna negotiate the best possible resolution on the output monitor and start sending that media content across that cable and you'll see that pop up over here in a second. Now that does take a couple of seconds when you first power them up because it does an extensive internal power on self-test, but once that finishes, that media content's gonna be sent across here and you'll see it come up on this monitor over here. And the interesting thing is you can separate these up to 330 feet apart, which is a long distance to be sending HDMI media content. And there you go. So what you're viewing here is HDMI content here that's been converted into a signal that's being sent across that LAN cable and then reconverted back into an HDMI media stream that's being displayed on this monitor. Now another nice feature this product provides is one called local loopback functionality, which allows you to continue to enjoy the content here that you're sharing with that secondary location, and that's a major benefit. And to take advantage of that feature, you'll need one more HDMI cable. I happen to have one right here. And you'll plug that into the HDMI output port on the back of the transmitter and you can plug the other end of it back into the monitor at the primary side. And what you'll see happen here is the content that's being shared with that secondary location is essentially being mirrored right here. So you can enjoy it while you're sharing it with that secondary location, which again is a major benefit. 
Now, if you stay tuned next, I'll show you the KVM functionality that this product provides as well. In the second part of the demonstration, I'll show you how you can not only use this product to share all of your HDMI media content from one location to another, but you can also use the included KVM functionality to extend a USB 2.0 connection to your second location. Now for this part of the demonstration, I've replaced the media player with my laptop and I'm actually looping it back here so you can see my desktop and I'm extending that desktop to the remote location. So these screens are exactly the same. Now to enable the KVM functionality, you'll need to connect the transmitter up to your computer and you can use the cable that's included with the kit to make that connection. On the one end of that cable is a USB-A connection which plugs into your computer and on the other end of the cable is another USB connection which plugs into the transmitter right here. And once you've made that connection, I want you to listen carefully, you'll hear the computer recognize the transmitter and now you're ready to go. The minute you make that connection, these three USB 2.0 ports are available. Also, these three USB-A ports are available, so you can connect the peripheral up at either location, which will immediately be recognized by your computer. Now, to show you how that works, I have a mouse here with a wireless dongle. You can use a wired mouse, a keyboard, a camera, a scanner, whatever you like that has a USB 2.0 compatibility. But for this demonstration, I'll show you how this works. Now, I'll start with the local transmitter, because once I plug this in, those three USB-A ports on the front act like a hub so I can plug USB devices in there. So I'll plug this dongle in right here. You'll hear the computer recognize it immediately, and now my mouse is active. You can see that I've got the mouse moving around. So we know it works over here. Now I'm gonna move that dongle to the remote location. And this can be quite a distance away. And I'll plug it in right here. There it is. So the mouse again is working at that remote location. So essentially what's happening here is you're extending the USB 2.0 connection over the same LAN cable that you're sending the video and audio, and anything you plug in out here at that remote location is immediately seen by your computer and can be used by your computer. So imagine the computer's at the primary location, maybe in your office, and you've set this remote location up in a bedroom upstairs. You can actually connect the keyboard and mouse here and control that computer downstairs in your office. And you can actually see the desktop as well, which is pretty amazing. Two other quick features this product provides. It also allows you to extend the internet connection so I can connect the transmitter to my router and the same LAN cable will extend that internet connection to the remote location. I can plug a computer in here and use that connection to my internet. The last feature, which I think is really amazing, is that these are bi-directional products and you can decide which one is the host and which one is the device by flipping that switch on the front. And that's fully explained in the manual, but that allows you to inject audio here to be played at this site or inject audio here to be played at this site. And you can do the exact same thing for video. I can inject video here through the HDMI connection on the back, and instead of looping back the local content, I can actually watch the content being sent from that remote location. So this product is packed with features and incredibly easy to use, and it's just that simple to get it working. I hope you found this overview of the O-Ray BK-EXB330EAU-K HDMI extension kit with KVM functionality helpful. It really does provide a complete solution for sharing all of your HDMI media content from one location with a second remote location up to 330 feet apart over a single CAT6 or CAT7 LAN cable. And the fact that it fully supports 8K ultra high definition media content and is both HDMI 2.1 and HDCP 2.3 compliant means it's going to work perfectly fine with all of the gear you own today. The inclusion of the power over cable technology greatly simplifies your wiring because a single power supply is all you'll need to operate the entire solution. The inclusion of the infrared blaster kits provides complete remote control of the media content you're watching by gathering up the remote control signals from that secondary location and passing those back to the primary location where they're rebroadcast to control that content. The local loopback feature is really important because it allows you to enjoy the content here while you're sharing it with the remote location. And the fact that these are bi-directional as far as video and audio is concerned means you can inject audio here to listen to it at the primary or vice versa, and the same for video. And finally, the extension of your internet connection between the primary and secondary locations means you can enjoy an internet connection over that same LAN cable. Everything you need to get started is included with the kit, and with a few simple connections, you can be up and running in no time. So until next time, thanks again for watching.